Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is creating and administrating domain user accounts in Active Directory on Windows Server 2012. So up to this point, we have installed Windows Server 2012, we figured out how to navigate through it, we have installed Active Directory and created our domain controller, we have created our domain, we have set up DHCP and the scopes, we have made sure that DNS is running. We have added a computer to the domain and so now the final big step for actually building your domain is being able to add users. So we will have been able to create a domain controller, DNS, DHCP, add computers, add users and now you will have been able to create a domain. So the big thing to remember whenever you are dealing with Active Directory in the Microsoft world is the idea behind Active Directory is to make administration easier for the sys admins that have to deal with the network. So if you had local accounts for every single computer on your network, what that would mean is that you or the sys admin would have to sit down at every single computer on the network to do any administrative tasks for the users. So if a user had locked themselves out and you had to reset a password, you would have to go and sit at their specific computer. If you wanted to add a user account, you would have to sit down at the specific computer if you were using local accounts. So that is not going to work in an environment with 50 computers or 100 computers or 10 thousand computers. So that's the beauty of Active Directory. It gives you one place to go to where you can add users, you can change passwords, you can disable accounts, so on and so forth. So in this class today, what I'm going to be showing you how to do is I'm going to show you how to create a new domain user. I'm going to log in with that domain user on a Windows 8 computer that I've already created. And then I'm going to show you the properties for that domain user uh, so that you can go in and you can change them in the future. Once we have done this, then in the next classes we can go into things like permissions and groups and security and get a little more complicated. So the first thing uh, I want to do before we actually get into looking at the computers, I want to go to our little digital whiteboard again just to make sure that everybody understands what's, what's going on and why we need a domain in order to make this work. So basically, before, what we have done is we have created our domain controller. And we have created a domain called etcg.com. So this domain controller has Active Directory, it has DNS, and it has DHCP installed on it. Then what we did is we have a Windows 8 computer out here. And what we did is we joined the Windows 8 computer to the etcg.com domain. Now why this is important is now the Windows 8 computer, it no longer looks to its internal databases for security. It now looks to the domain controller to be told what users are allowed to do what, what resources they're allowed to access, so on and so forth. So the important thing with joining this computer to the domain is now now it is looking to that domain controller to Active Directory to say what can a user do? Is a user able to log in? Does a username and password match? That type of thing. So that's why we joined the computer to the domain before. So this is a very important thing. If you don't join your, your computer to the domain, then it won't be able to access the domain controller and, 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 and none of it will work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to my trusty little Windows uh, 2012 server and we are going to add a new user. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to click on server manager like we always have. So server manager again this is the primary place where we're going to be dealing with, with almost everything. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to tools and just like in the adding the computer class we're going to go down to active directory users and computers. So when this opens up, we can see 
So it's showing us etcg.com. This is my domain. So whatever you have named your domain, whatever you've named it, so that will be there. And then when we look down, we see there's built-in, we see there's computers, we see there's a whole bunch of stuff. But what we're looking for is the users. So this users folder here, it is going to show us the user accounts. And then it's also going to show us group accounts. So groups are going to be something we are going to deal with in a different class. So whenever you see like the single person here, uh, that means it's a user account. And when you see like these two people side by side, that means it's a group account. For right now, don't worry about the group accounts. Now when we installed Windows Server 2012, it created two uh, users for us, the administrator user and the guest user. You can see, I don't know if you can see, there's a little down arrow right beside this guest user. This guest user has been disabled. So when you install originally, all you're going to have is this administrator account. So if you want to add new users, all you have to do is you go over here to the users folder and then you're going to right click. So you right click so that you get uh, the options and then you're going to go to new so from here, you're gonna see you get a lot of stuff, computer, contact, group. We're gonna be dealing with a lot of this in the future, but what we want is a new user. So all we're gonna do is we're going to create a new user. Then when uh, we do the create the new user, basically we're just gonna get a general form. So what, what is the first name of this person? So we're gonna say test, no initial, and then we're gonna say user. So this is going to be test user, full name, test user. Then we're going to say what the login name is. So again, I would just say test user, all one word. So test user at etcg.com. And then all we're going to do is we're going to click next. Now it's going to ask us for the password. So I'm going to put in password here. Now you have a few options here. Now these are some of the kind of the cool things, the options they give you as an administrator. So one of the big things uh, in the administrator world is we never want to know our users' passwords. You might find that shocking. You, you may be surprised with that. You would think that we always want to know our users' passwords. But in fact, we never want to know our users' passwords. If you know a user's password, then you can get into all kinds of horrible, awful office politics where the user says that you logged in as them and then you did something funky with the computer. So what you want to do is you usually, if you're logging in for another user, you want to check off this box that says user must change password at next login. What this means is they will be able to log in using the password you gave them here, but then they will immediately be be asked to change the password. So if if a user uh, forgot their password and they need you to reset it, what you would do is you would put in some default password here and then say user must change password at next login. You would then call the user. You say, hey user, here's your password. They go to login and then they're immediately told to change their password to something new can also have user cannot change password. You don't see this a lot in the real world, but you know, it's always possible. Password never expires. Account is disabled. So one of the things, one of the, the quote unquote best practices that Microsoft says is that you generally should not delete accounts. You should only disable accounts. The reason being is a lot of times you give permissions or rights to users that you may want to give to somebody else in the future. What you can do is if, you, let's say somebody gets terminated, they get fired, instead of deleting the account, what you can do is you can disable it. When a new person gets hired, then all you do is you rename the account and uh, everybody has all the permissions. So there's any number of reasons an account might be disabled, but basically, that's just right there. Then we can click next, and this is going to tell us the user that we are going to create. Oops, I want to uncheck that actually. Hit and finish. So now the user has been created. See, we've got this test user down here. And now to show you how simple this is, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to my Windows 8 computer. So this is my Windows 8 computer. And as we can see, I am currently, or I was logged in as ETCG administrator. So what I wanna do is I wanna log in as this test user. So I go back, I do other user, 
and it's going to sign into the etcg domain. So now I just do test user and my password and go. And now we can see that this Windows 8 computer is logging me in. So that's all I needed to do to be able to create an account on this domain. So I can log into this computer, I could log into another computer, I could log into to any computer on the network as long as I've been given permission to do so. So while this is, is, is getting this ready, let's go back and uh, I know it's being a pain on me right now. Let me go back. I'm gonna go back to the server now. And what I wanna do is, so we are at the server, so we're back at the server 2012, and I just wanna show you the properties for the user. So if we wanna look at the properties for test user or any other user, what we can do is we can right click and we can go to properties. Now this gives us a lot more options than we saw before. So again, first name, last name, display name, description, office, telephone number, email, so on and so forth. You can plug in the address, you can plug in account information. So here, this is where we can do things like user must change password at next login, user cannot change password, password never expires, and then it gives you a whole bunch, account is disabled, a lot of other options. You can have this account expire. So if you wanted to give an account, let's say to a contractor that will only be around a month, and you wanna make sure that once that month is over, they can no longer log in, you could have this uh, expire. You can do a log on hours, so you can say when the person is able to log on to the network. So again, the, the whenever we're dealing with hackers, the people that frankly we're most concerned with is employees or we are worried about employee credentials. So if we have, let's say, a secretary that comes in at 8 o'clock every morning and leaves at 5 o'clock at night, and that's what she does. That's what she did for the past five years, and that's what she's going to do for the next 20 years. Well, then, in order to protect our systems, we could restrict her so that she can only log in between 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. That way, if a cleaning person tries to come in, uh, let's say, during Saturday and use their credentials to log in to the system, they won't be able to, uh, to do it. So that's one of the things you can do, those login hours. Profile, we'll go into to in the future, so when we get into more complicated stuff, telephones, organizations, remote control uh, of the desktop, just a whole bunch of different stuff in here. So basically, this is where you really flesh out and, and give your, uh, your, your user a lot more abilities. One of the things we'll get into in the future too is things like the member of. So when we want to add this user to a group, we can go to the member of and we can add the member, uh, the, uh, the user to a group here, dial in permission, so on and so forth. So now, hopefully over, yep, it is, we have logged into our Windows 8 computer and we can see that the test user is currently logged in. So this user now has a new profile. So both the administrator and the user have a profile on this computer. So that's really all there is to creating the user accounts uh, on a Windows Server 2012 in Active Directory. So you just right click, you go to new, you go to user, and you go through the, the, uh, the, the whole Megillah. So now that you know how to create users, in our next classes we can go into groups and we can start dealing with security and we can start dealing with some more complicated stuff. But at this point, you now know how to build a basic Active Directory structure. You understand how to install the server, you understand how to create the, uh, the domain controller, the domain install Active Directory, you understand how to do DNS, you understand DHCP, you added a computer, and you can now add user accounts. Woohoo! You now can build at least a small, <laughs> a small, not overly functional Active Directory infrastructure, but it's, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, so that's all there is to it. Now the important thing, again, remember that when we're dealing with Active Directory, that means all those user accounts are on the domain controllers, and then unless some other security policy has been set up, that means the user can go to any computer in the network and be able to log on. So they can go, the secretary can log into the secretary 
secretary's computer, or they could log into the CEO's computer, or they could log into a different computer. The main thing to remember though with this is that each user has a different profile. So if the secretary logs into the CEO's computer, she will be able to log into the CEO's computer, but she will only see her profile. She will not see the CEO's profile. So that's one of the important things to realize. So it's not like the secretary can go to the CEO's computer, log in, and all of a sudden she can see everything that's there. When she logs in, she gets her own profile with her own My Documents folder, her own desktop folder, her own settings, and all that kind of stuff. And again, we will get into some of that more complicated stuff later. But this is the basic idea of users. So this was the class, Creating and Administering Domain User Accounts in Active Directory on Windows Server 2012. As always, I enjoy teaching this class. And again, now, now we can start getting to the fun stuff and really showing you guys why Active Directory is really, really kind of powerful and cool. So, uh, so it was fun, and I'll see you at the next class.